In this video, we're going to continue our work on integration by parts and look at example two. So example two, we want to compute the integral from one to four of six x to the second power ln of x. So one rule of thumb when choosing your u is to follow the, the following acronym, L-I-A-T-E, Eliate. So that is logs, inverse functions, algebraic expressions, trig functions, and exponents or exponential. So it turns out that if we are looking at an integral of a product here, if we first, if we have a log, then use or let u equal that log. If we only have inverses, let u be the inverse, algebraic, trig, exponential. So follow this hierarchy for choosing your u. So in this case, we do have a log. So it's going to most likely work out that we should let u be equal to our ln of x. So other examples here, inverse functions are things like inverse sine, say. Algebraic expressions are things like x plus 2. Trig functions we know is like sine, cosine, and exponential are like e to the x. All right, so here, let's see what happens when we let u be equal to ln of x. So that means dv will be equal to what? Well, six is just a constant, so we can go ahead and remove that and just bring it in later, multiply everything by six. So then our v or dv will then be x squared dx. And again, with this six here, we can include six in the dv. If we'd like, we can also just remove it, as I said, and bring it in later. All right, so let's try this out. So what would our du be then? Well, the derivative of natural log is just one over x dx. And what about v? So our derivative is x squared, so we need to use the antiderivative for a powers. So we get x cubed over three. So now let's try that out for how we would compute this integral using that integration by parts. So we would have the integral from one to four. We're gonna have a six multiplied by everything. So we have six times the integral from one to four of x squared ln of x dx. So that becomes six all times u times v. I'm going to write it under here so we know what we need to fill in. So u times v minus the integral from 1 to 4 of v du. So I'm going to have u is ln of x. I'm going to have v as x cubed over 3. And we're still going to evaluate this from 1 to 4. And we're going to subtract the integral from 1 to 4 of v, which is x cubed over 3 du, which is 1 over x dx. So take a moment to pause the video to make sure that you've gotten the same uh, result as we have here. And ready, when you're ready, let's go ahead and take a look at how we'd simplify our work here before computing integrals. So here I'm still having six being multiplied by everything. And then I have ln of x times x cubed over three, evaluated at one and four, minus the integral from one to four of, and we notice here that it, uh, x in the numerator cancels with an x in the denominator. So we're only left with x squared over three dx. And again, this whole part here is being multiplied by that six because what I'm substituting in here in the parentheses is that integral from one to four. Awesome. So if we then find that antiderivative, we'd want the antiderivative of here, x squared over three. So we would compute that just using that antiderivative power rule. So that would become x cubed over three times three, 
because we have that three in the denominator still. And then we're evaluating there from one to four. So gathering up everything here. We're almost ready to evaluate. All right, so now we'll, we will evaluate. So what I encourage you to do is pause the video and do that evaluation on your own first, and then we'll look at it together. And for problems like this, it's really just about taking it slow, using a lot of space so that you don't mix up or rearrange any of your terms. All right, let's go for it. So we're multiplying everything by six. So the first thing we're gonna do is evaluate this ln of x, x cubed over three at four. So we have ln of four times four cubed all over three. Then we're gonna subtract from that the evaluation at one. So ln of one times one cubed all over three. And now to that, we're gonna subtract when we evaluate this second part of our difference. So I'm gonna use a lot of parentheses, that way this negative doesn't slip out and only address one of the terms. So I'm gonna first evaluate x cubed over nine at four, so I have four cubed over nine. And I'm gonna subtract when I evaluate at one, so one cubed over nine. Then close up those parentheses. All right, so now it's just about computing out these terms. All right, so we'll just look term by term and continue to simplify. So I'm multiplying everything by six. And now I have here in this first term, four cubed. That's gonna be 128. So I have 128. Oh, and actually let's back that up here. Not quite 128, so nice work, everyone who caught that. Four cubed is actually 64, so I have 64 over three, ln of four. ln of four is gonna be a pretty heavy decimal number, so a lot of decimal points, so we'll just leave it at ln of four. And then we're gonna subtract this next term here. So let's look at ln of one. So recall ln tells us what exponent we'd want e to be raised to, to get what is inside the ln. So this is saying, ln of one is saying, what do we wanna raise e to to get one in the end? If we raise e to the power of zero, we get one. So ln of one is just zero. So if we had zero here, then we have zero times one cubed over three is just still gonna be zero. So we have minus zero. So now moving on to this next terms here, four cubed is again that 64. So we have 64 over nine minus one cubed is just one over nine. All right, so we can simplify even further. So we get six times 64 over three, ln of four. Now 64 over, 64 over nine minus one over nine, that just becomes 63 over nine which we can check if it simplifies. So we can do that math, 63. 63 divided by nine is gonna give us seven. So that conveniently cancels to seven. This 64 ninths minus one ninth, so that gives us seven. So now we're gonna multiply six throughout. So we have six times 64 over three, ln of four, minus six times seven. So continuing to simplify here, the six and three canceled, it gives us a two in the numerator. So we're left with 128 times the ln of four minus 42. Nice work. So there is our answer. So before concluding this video, I want us to practice computing the decimal approximation of this integral. So let's go over to our calculator and punch it in together so that you make sure that you're entering it in your calculator correctly. So I'm gonna pull up my calculator on my iPad here. And then I'm gonna punch in uh, that computation or that expression that I just found. So 128, and feel free to follow along with your own notes, times, 
times the ln. So for that, I'm going to go over to function over here on the right and find that natural log of four. So I'll go back to main, click in four and parentheses. And then I'm going to subtract 42. And then we notice your answer is shown on that right side. So approximately we have 135.4456782. So if we round to the nearest three decimal places, we should be getting 135.446. I'm going to write that down. So this is approximately 135.446. Awesome work. So there are ways that you can compute these integrals using a calculator. So just punching in that integral into your calculator. Um, but for that, we're not getting, if we just do that, then we're not getting this practice of using integration by parts. So in this section of the book, please, or of our, of our notes and of our class, please continue to use this method so you become more familiar with how to find and compute comp integrals using this integration by parts. All right, thanks for watching everyone.